Aloha, I'm Terry Lilly, a marine biologist here in the Hawaiian Islands. I hope you enjoy my film. A healthy Hawaiian reef is home to a variety of shell species. The vast majority of shells do not make it to the shore, but are smashed to bits by Hawaii's legendary surf. The shells are ground up along with broken coral to make our expansive white sand beaches. To study these unique creatures, we need to dive deep into the caves where the redfish dwell and the mollusks are protected from high surf and tidal surges. Let's go shelling along the Hawaiian reefs with Terry. As a marine biologist here in Hawaii, I have found many live shells out on the reef, and the cone shells have been the most common. These are the two inch long Hebrew cone shells, and then the rare Nusatella cone. Most of these cone shells come out at nighttime. They're active at night and they hide during the day. This is a beautiful textile cone. These huge leopard cone shells get up to nine inches long. They're normally covered with algae, so they're hard to see. The really beautiful and rare striated cone shell, and then the ringed cone shell. One of the most beautiful of all of the shells in the ocean here is the textile cone. The Hawaiian name for this is pupu ala, and that means dizzy shell. And that's because right below the siphon there where it breathes and smells from, it has a poisonous harpoon-like tooth. If you grab this shell when it's alive out on the reef like this one, you could get stung with an extremely poisonous venom that may put you in the hospital. These textile cones use this harpoon-like shell to kill small fish and even eat other shells like cowries. Hawaii is famous for its puka shells, and the puka shells are actually the top part of a cone shell that's ground up on the reef and ends up on the beach. The second most live shells that I find out on the reef are the beautiful cowrie shells, like this huge six inch long tiger cowrie. The Hawaiian name is leho. What you can see on this cowrie is the mantle, which is the inside of the shell, the live part of the shell that comes out and covers up the shell. This actually keeps the shell very polished and very beautiful looking. The mantle have these little fleshy bumps on them called papillae. These shells are kind of a whorl-like shell that winds around itself as it grows and it has somewhat like tooth-like structures on the bottom of the shell. This is one of the reticulated cowrie shells. It's about four inches long. And then the humpback cowrie shell, which looks very similar, but it has more of a black band around the base. Once again, most of these shells you find in caves during the daytime or active out at nighttime. This reticulated cowrie is cruising around on the reef on its fleshy foot. The shell stays shiny when the papillae and the mantle come out and polish the shell. This is a beautiful and colorful lithian cowrie. It's about three inches long and they have a jet black mantle. Sometimes you see these cowries when they're mating in a cave with a pair of them. As you can see in this one, the mantle is partially covering the shell, keeping it nice and polished. Most all of these cowries eat different types of sponges and algae. This is the mole cowrie with the mantle and the papillae out exposed. And the mole cowrie looks a lot like the lethean cowrie, but it has a black band around the base. They're really weird looking when they have the mantle out like this and they have all kinds of different strange shapes. A lot of times divers won't even recognize it as a cowrie. This is a really beautiful four inch long calf cowrie. Some of these cowries are fairly hard to identify. Hawaii has quite a number of different cowrie species and some of them look very, very similar. This is one that's really easy to identify because it has little bumps all over the shell. It's a little two inch long granulated cowrie. 
The translucent calorie is real small, about an inch and a half. These are really kind of famous calories. They're called money calories, and they're quite rare in Hawaii. This one has its mantle out. In different parts of the world, they actually use these calories for money. This is the little honey calorie, and then we have the Isabella calorie. When you find a calorie with part of its shell that's eaten off on the top, that's because an octopus drilled into it and ate the calorie from the inside out. One of the most famous shells in Hawaiian waters are these large trumpet shells. They have a very thick shell with the pointed tip and a tooth-like inner lip. Now these shells can get huge. This one's a Triton trumpet shell and it can get all the way up to 28 inches long. It's one of the world's largest sea snails. You can see one next to a tiger cowrie here, and the trumpet shell has what's called an operculum, which is a hard shell that blocks its inner soft part of its body. They're often covered with crustose coral and algae, so when they're upside down on the reef, sometimes they're really hard to see. These shells have an inner foot and two little feelers that they find food with. They're incredibly important to the health of the entire coral reef ecosystem. These large triton trumpet shells eat starfish, like this cushion star, and they also eat the crown of thorn starfish. They poke into the shell and suck out the starfish from the inside. Sometimes it takes them two to four days to eat one large starfish. The reason why this is so important is these starfish eat live coral. One should never take these trumpet shells off the reef. They're very popular and they're called poo here in Hawaii and they were used in ancient times as a blowing shell. These crown of thorn starfish eat live coral and they could kill the whole reef. But when there's lots of the trumpet shells around, it keeps the starfish in check. Here's a pair of them mating. We also have a smaller type of trumpet shell. This one's called a hairy trumpet shell. They only get three to four inches long. They have an outer coating of skin that looks like hair growing on the shell. This is a nicobar. A trumpet shell which is also only three to four inches long. You can see when these shells die hermit crabs take them over. So the smaller ones are very important for the hermit crab community. This is one of the very rare ones. We have several species of very rare trumpet shells here in Hawaii. These are the really neat augers. The augers live underneath the sand they get about eight inches long, and they feed on worms under the sand. This is the white spotted auger. Sometimes you'll see 10 or 20 different looking ones in one sandy lagoon. These are the bubble shells, and they're called poo poo leho leho. They live underneath the sand, and they have paper thin shells. The body of this little head shield slug can't even retract back into its shell. Troop shells are very common out on the Hawaiian reef. These are about an inch and a half long and the top is covered with algae. But when you turn them over, they're absolutely brilliant underneath. This one's called the brilliant droop. Its Hawaiian name is Makaloa. People dive right over these shells all the time and never see them. This is the mulberry droop. And then the spotted droop. They blend incredibly well on the hard reef, and they're very hard to see, but very common. This is a beautiful poo pui, or the large helmet shell. This shell gets to be 15 inches long. It's really knobby on the top, and the flat base is super shiny. These shells hang out on the sand, and they eat heart urchins that are buried below the sand. This is one of the dwarf spiked helmet shells. The miters are very, very common out on the Hawaiian reef. Usually you see them at nighttime on the edge of the reef. Most of them are only a couple inches long. They have a spindle shape with a thick middle. Pearl oysters are very common. Their Hawaiian name is pa. 
there rarely have pearls in the Hawaiian pearl oysters. So therefore, they're not harvested for the use of pearls. But in Tahiti, they actually grow these in inside lagoons to produce pearls. This is a spiny oyster that grows back in caves. And then we have a lot of these cliff oysters that are very common. Sometimes they're hard to see. They are on vertical cliffs most of the time, but they're covered up by sponges. The inside of the shell is actually cemented to the cliff. These big knife jaw fish actually feed on these cliff oysters and will pop off the top part of the shell and eat the insides. This is the beautiful, really unique looking partridge tun shell. They come out at nighttime. The shell is very thin, but it's six to eight inches across. The Hawaiian name is Pu Oni Oni O. They'll sit up on top of the reef sometime during the daytime, but most of the time they're active at night. They have a huge foot. It's so big, they can't get it within their shell. So during the day, they have to dig under the sand to be safe. When they die, often hermit crabs take over the shells, like this big hairy hermit crab. This is one of the very rare apple tun shells. This is the rare two inch long Pele's Mirac shell and the burnt Mirac shell. And they live in deep water along with these spindle shells that are called Pupu Nucaloa. This is the love harp that lives out on the sand. This three inch shell buries in the sand and it has ribs that look like the strings on a harp. This is called the pimpled basset. They're a scavenger that comes out at nighttime. This is the armored die shell and then the very rare deep water strom shell. This is a Hawaiian turban shell. They're small and live in deep water. Their name is Pupu Mahina. This is a top snail. Very unusual creature. It's actually a slug, not a snail, but it has a little shell on its top. These are mussels that live all over the place in the tide pools. And then we have cockle shells that live on the seafloor, partially under the sand. We have lots of hermit crabs here in Hawaii. And any shell that exists for more than a half an hour or so without anything in it will be occupied by a hermit crab. We have lots of different Hawaiian shells, but many of them are hard to identify because they're very rare and we very rarely ever see them. Thank you for watching my underwater tour of Hawaiian seashells. If you would like to see more of the amazing creatures that inhabit our coral reefs here in Hawaii, please go to my webpage at underwater2web.com and also our YouTube channel at underwater2web. Thank you for watching.